Welcome to Faith City Outreach, where your host, Marina Maria, reaches out to the world to discuss Christian topics and providing biblical solutions, as well as praying for the nations. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. The music in this broadcast is provided courtesy of Zapsplat.com. Now, here is your host, Marina Maria. Declare the scripture Zechariah 2 5 over Faith City Outreach, where the Lord says, And I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord, and I will be its glory within. Welcome to Faith City Outreach. This is Marina Maria with today's special guest, Pastor Charlene Garza from All Tribes Christian Fellowship Church in Phoenix, Arizona. Today, Pastor Charlene will be giving part two of her sermon called Exile from Captivity. Thank you very much, Pastor Charlene, for sharing this sermon to the nations. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Uh, Let's open our Bibles to Exodus chapter 15. And we're going to read off from verses, um, verse 6. On there it says that, um, Exodus chapter 15, verse 6 says, Your right hand, Lord, are majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemies. So our God, our 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 savior our our lord has majestic he is majestic mighty in power and when we look upon him his right hand is so powerful that he will go after our enemies that he will save us from our 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 situations our things we're going through I remember the time that I grew up on on this remote area that I lived on, and um, I remember walking after a herd of cattle. And if you're walking behind a cattle, there's dust that piles up. So she, it's it's all dirt, and they're on their way to. Um, I'm trying to herd them to the to a lake. As they get closer to the lake, they're running as fast as they can. And they get there, and the bells around their neck are, are shaking. And, and they get there, and they get so relief after drinking a couple uh, uh, drops of water. And, and that dust that when you see, when you're walking in this road, on the road with Jesus, that dust that piles up, how does that make you feel? It kind of makes you feel like it's in your way, right? That you can't see. You can't see through your own lens of glasses if you wear one. Or you can't clear out your eyelids, you know, your lashes because it's full of dust. Well, our circumstances is like that. The pile of dust in front of us. But with God, he's going to direct our path. He's going to take us in the direction that he wants us to go. As we walk on this path, we want to drink that water. When we're on our way to drink that well of water, it could be what we, we could be walking on dry land. We could be walking on the, the best terrain, grassy area, in the hills, you know, in the streams, that water that comes from the mountains. Wherever your situation is, you're you're on a, a, a on a mission. You're on a you're on a uh, um, your your train of thought is to drink that water, and water represents God. God is the one that wells up water for us. When we follow God with all our heart with all our mind, with all our soul. He will take us through all the circumstances that we might be going through, whether it's the time of peace, whether it's a time of joy, whether we're singing, whether we're dancing, whether we're reading the Bible at peace, God is with us. 
And verse 7 says, Exodus 15, verse 7, In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who oppose you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. So our Savior, our God, will fight for us because he's great in power. He's mighty in power, mighty in battle. He will take down our enemies. He will consume them like a stubble. And he's there through with us. We will not be afraid as we depend upon the Lord. Verse 8 says, By the blasts of your nostrils, the water piles up. The surging water stood up like a wall. The deep waters con congeal in the heart of the sea. Our Savior, our Lord, He is out of his nose will be fire will come out water a blast of water will come out because he is the almighty God he is our savior in when we are the deepest of the sea when we're in the deep of our circumstances he can reach down with his mighty hand with his mighty right hand, he can save us. And we allow him to. We must allow him because that's the only way out. By your cry, by your tears that drop down your faces, he will hear it. When we speak to our God, we speak from our heart. When we speak to him, we speak to him with everything that's on our mind and our heart. He will hear us. He will see us through. And verse 9 says, The enemy boasts, and I will pursue. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword, and my hand will destroy them. See, the enemy is also scared of us. As we get stronger in the Word of God, as we read, as our wisdom grows, as our understanding gets better, as our knowledge gets even deeper, as we combine the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom together, the enemy has no stand in our way anymore. As we pray, as we use the word of God, as we build ourselves with the scriptures from our heart, as we speak to our situations to be good, to be normal, to straighten out, the Lord God Almighty is ready to overtake our enemy. He, he is there. He is there with us. He has a sword. And his sword is not just there for it to, to hang down from his clothing. But he is going to use that to destroy the enemy with his hand. He will fight for us. He will be with us through every situation that we're going through. Verse 10 says, But you blew with your breath. And the sea covered them. They sank like lead, they sank like lead in the mighty waters. Our God's breath, as He breathes, as He blows, the sea, the sea covers everything. Just as the sea covers everything beneath the sea. We don't know what's underneath there. All kinds of stuff. But God's going to come and cover our situation. He will devour them. And they will sink in that mighty water. Because God is with us. Verse 11 says, 
Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? When I grew up on this remote area that I grew up in, for the first 18 years of my life, until I went to college, I remember that I used to collect tadpoles I used to thinking I'm going fishing but it wasn't even a fish it was more like a puddle a puddle of water with with mud at the bottom I was only a child and I collected them I put them in paper bags and in a, in a, in a plastic bag to put water in it and I, I I'm trying to 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 collect the tadpoles and when I think about this, the sand that covered everything underneath the sand was all kinds of stuff. Whether it's going to be seaweed, whether it's going to be just just regular garbage that comes, trash. And I used to go in there and, and try to take out the tadpoles. But see, God knows what's in that lake. God knows what is in that puddle. He will take the good things out of there, and he's going to save us. He will take his hand in there and take us out one by one, and that is us. He's going to put us into the higher ground. We were made for die. We were made to suffer. We were made to go through the hard time. But God is telling us today that he, he is your God. That he chose you out of the miry clay. That he chose you before you were born. Before your mother's womb, he knew your name. He knows the, the amount of hair on your head just as he drew us out of this miry dirty water in my example God can take you out of any situation any circumstances that you're going through God is a God that saves you he is a God among all the gods He's above all the gods of the earth. He is Jesus. He is the Lord. He is holy. He's majestic in power. He's awesome in glory. He works wonders in our life. Have you ever heard someone come to you with great news? And they're so excited they can't breathe through the conversation. Or their arms could be shaking. Or the heart rate goes up. Or they're jumping up and down. That I can't wait to burst my story out. Because something great has happened to that person's life. Whether it was a situation. Whether there was a story. Whether there's an incident. Whatever it could have been. But see, we are like that about God. When we share with others about Jesus, about God, we, we are stepping into an area where it's so overwhelming with joy because we might have had a news, maybe a situation, maybe in healthcare. You might have been diagnosed. Maybe maybe your kidney wasn't working fully. Maybe your heart wasn't working. Maybe you had a wound. Whatever it was. That, but God has healed your body. The report from the medical doctor says, you are healed. You're no longer on this medication. Come off. No longer will you be taking this medicine. When that happens, we, our joy overwhelms us. The joy in our life 
is very powerful because that gives us hope, hope to endure, hope to go on with God because God is strong, God is real, God is great. In verse 12, it says, you stretch out your right hand and the earth swallows your enemies. As God is stretching his right hand over our enemies, over our situation, God is going to take care of us. He is there with us. He's not going to overflow you. It's not going to get overwhelming. Sometimes we may feel anxious or anxiety or worry or, or, or things of life get so much that we can't do it on our own. But when we depend upon the Lord, when we look unto him, his righteous right hand is there to save us. Verse 13 says, in your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed in the strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. Our God loves us so much. He has unfailing love towards us. That is how his people, the Israelites, were redeemed because he loved his people. And God's strength will guide us. He will lead us in the ways we should go. In our home, own human strength, we have the undivided attention to our daily task. We know that we get up in the morning at a certain time. At a certain time, we go to bed in the, at night. Within that whole day, we are busy with things of life, whether we have meetings, whether we have school, whether we have our stay-at-home mom, or with, whether we have jobs, and whether we have professions. In that time, our body wears out. So we eat, so we take a snack, we drink water, we feed our physical body with nutrition. See, God gives us the strength on our daily job, our daily work. Without that, we wouldn't be able to do anything out of our own because he is God. Verse 14 says, The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. See, the nation for us today is worldwide. Because God's hand is for the people. And the people, we, we should not be afraid. Because God's hand is with us. He's ready to go alongside in our walk with him. Verse 15 says, The chief of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will mount away. As this is happening, we have a God. Our God is with us. Through, through our situation, such as if we have a job, we're going to answer to the leadership of the place. If we have a family, we're going to answer to our family. We will always submit to someone. But see, God is our leader. God is who we're going to follow because we know he's going to come through our situation. Verse 16 says, Terror and dread will fail on them. By the power of your arm, they will be as still as a stone. 
until the people pass by, until the people you brought pass by. See, it's so important when they were traveling this time. They had to depend upon the Lord. They had to sing. They had to trust in the power of his arm. Because within his arm, there was strength. There was deliverance. There was peace through it. Verse 17 says, you will bring them and plant them. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountains of your inheritance. The place, Lord, you made for your dwelling. The sanctuary, Lord, your hands establish. See, God will take us through places of a difficult time and he will take us out of it. Sometimes circumstance of life is so tough that when do I get out? When, it, when is this going to end? And when it ends, God lead us to a place where there is water. There's a place where there's trees. There's a place where there's, there's, there's a irrigation that we won't be thirsty. As he puts us on this terrain where everything can grow. He did not leave you to your tough situation. So well, he will not leave you when you are planted in the terrain, that soil, that moisture where you're going to grow. See, God has us in certain position for a reason. He wants us to grow and mature in him. How do we do that? We do that by reading the Word of God. We do that by praising Him, worshiping Him. We do that by meditating on the Scriptures. Maybe we can pray. We, 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 we need to pray. See, through prayer, everything comes from prayer. Direction, communication. There's a special thing in our heart when we pray. It's like peace that we cannot explain. Only God can give us. That place where God's with you right now, he is your dwelling in the area that you're at. Whether you read the Bible for 10 minutes, 5 minutes, or an hour, or whatever long you pray, God is with you through that. Whether you worship for five, ten minutes, or an hour, God is with you through that. Whether you pray, whether you meditate on the law and for a long time or a short time, God is with you. He wants you to make him your dwelling place. You know, when you think about sanctuary, we think about a place, a building, or where we go to. But see, in our hearts, God also lives there. He also lives in our heart. And if you don't know Jesus today, all you need to do is pray a simple prayer. And you can follow me if you wish. Say, Jesus, come into my heart today. I need you. I know that I have lived a sinful life. I know my ways weren't your ways, but I want to follow you. All the days of my life, I want the well in the house of the Lord forever. Teach me, guide me, train me, send me, Lord. Here I am. Use me. And you can end with this and say, Jesus, thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for being my dwelling place. We have to make our God our dwelling place, our sanctuary. We have to establish a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. 
when you have a friend, you don't just meet a friend once in a great while, but you have you and your friend know exactly all your your ups and down stories, your personal stories, your your community, your you share your goals, you share your victories, you share your low, where you're what you're going through difficulties. See, a friend is like someone close and closer to you. See, God is just like that. God is a friend. God is closer in our heart. We must know him in a greater way. We must know him in a special way. When you speak to him on a daily basis, it's going to be like that. Nothing in your life will no longer, no longer be an issue. Whether you are experiencing the best days of your life, everything is going great. Nothing, you don't need nothing for prayer. Whether you're going through the hardest time of your life, whether you feel like you're alone, you're by yourself, and no one's there with you. God is there with you. God is going to be in your life if you allow him to. He's going to make everything worth it. In verse 18, it says, The Lord reigns forever and ever. This speaks about who God is. See, when we know Jesus as our Savior, when we know God as for sure, when we know him personally. He begins to reign in our life. He begins to show the direction he wants us to go. See, when we get up in the morning, what do we do? We usually pray, right? Or if it's in the middle of the day or, or, or whenever you set up your prayer, you get up refresh before your feet touches the floor. You believe and by faith that you're going to get ready for today and you can go on to do your, um, if you go to work, you're going to work. If you're going to go on to go to school or if you're a stay home, mom or dad or student, God is a God. Name above all names. Let's allow him to reign in our life. Let's allow him to be with us throughout the day, throughout the night. We can't turn him off like a faucet, like a water. We open the the valve for the water to flow, then we turn off the valve to stop the water. God is not like that. He's with us in all circumstances of our life. In verse 19, it says, When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. See, when we think about that, we think about faith. See, faith is only established by believing in the unseen, what has not happened yet. And we also have to hope for it. Just as these people of Israel, God's people, went through the dry ground, he will make a way out for you too. The Pharaoh and his horses and his chariots and his horsemen, they fell into the sea. And the sea overflowed over them. See, God is, is going to do that for you today. He will make your enemies underneath the sea. He will flow waters back on them. He's going to make 
everyone that's involved, the chariots, the horsemen, the, the pharaohs, the enemies that are, are they go in groups? You know, when I think about that, I think about in, in, in medicine. You have to contact the bacteria several days before. Let's say if you're getting a cold or a flu, and it takes a while for it to grow, then it comes and start, you start having the sore throat. You go through the stages of runny nose, and you go through the stages of coughing that lasts weeks. Depending on your body's immune system, you get over it right away, or you, go, you get over it within two to, two to four weeks. 14, 7 to 14 days is the hardest time. See, we have timelines for everything, us humans. We make timelines for our situations. You know, at this stage, I should be doing this. At this stage, I should be going this direction. At this time, how long? How long am I going to go through my hardship? But see, God is with us through all that. Whether it's catching a cold, whether we're, whether we're having financial problems, whether we have no money to buy food, whether we have to depend upon the Lord on our daily needs, we must do that. Because He deserves to honor, to respect. He deserves our praises and our worship. He deserves our communication with him. Because the more we speak to him, the more we're allowing him to grow in us. The more we speak of the word, the more it's going to grow in our spirit. See, anything that we remember, the Bible verses or our scriptures or stories, doesn't just happen overnight. It takes time. It takes time to read it over and over again to remember. Sometimes it takes someone to explain it to you. Sometimes that's even not helping. You start looking up in a dictionary words that you can understand. And see, God is with us through that too. He will give us the understanding he will give us the wisdom. He will give us the knowledge. We have to allow him to teach us. I remember growing up, I wasn't a very intelligent person. I had a hard time reading, had a hard time pronunciating words, I had a hard time in every areas of my studies, math, English, writing, social studies, spelling. But I remember when I went home, when school was over, I prayed and telling God, I need you. I need you to help me so that I can go to college one day. I need you to help me so I can get a job one day. I cry out to God and say, God, I don't want to live in this remote area anymore. There's no jobs. There's no technology. But when I grow up, God, my prayer was this. I want to go to the university earn my degree, and continue to work for you and to earn a pay in my trade. And I grew up as a farmer. I grew up as a, as, as a um, raising sheep and goats and cattle and horses, ranching. We depended upon the livestock to bring us food. They were our clothing. 
they were they were the ones that when we sell they provided food for the table for us we even trade with our textile whether it's rugs whether it's anything we can make with our hand clothing we did trading to bring food on a table life wasn't easy growing up but I depended upon the Lord today in my lifetime I am experiencing total dependence upon God in every areas of my life whether it's a job whether it's finances, whether it's health, whether it's of my spirit, physical, emotional, and he's always been there. He will be there with you too. My grades have changed when I pray to God. From elementary to high school, junior high through high school. My grades were excellent. I graduated from my high school. The top percentages. So I earned my grades. I took an exam for SAT, ACT. And I was able to go to the university. And when I moved to the university, my whole life changed. My life changed because I grew up in a different community. And growing up in the city was different. I miss my livestock. I miss how I grew up. But see, God was with me through it. And I learned to adapt to city life. I didn't know how to bake. I didn't know how to get a job, but I did. Years later, I got my associate's degree from the local community college. I earned my bachelor's degree from the university and I recently, a couple years ago, I got my master's degree. But see, God is going to be with you through everything. He will be with you what desires you have. Whether you work in the fields like I did, or whether you have a skill I have college degrees. Whatever decisions, whatever trade that you have in the medical. And this year, I am admitted to go to nursing school. I'm excited. It takes time. It takes practice. It takes dedication, commitment. But I know in my heart, God is the only one that has opened a door and opportunity. So today, God can open that door for you too. God can open that door because he's there with you. See, just as the Israelites were set free from the pharaohs. He will set you free from any circumstances you're going through. My story is what I shared. But your story is similar to mine as well. Because we all have stories. Some may not be good, some may not be 
something we want to share with others. But see, God knows your story personally. And he will see you through it. So in verse 20, in Exodus 15, verse 20 says, Then Marian the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a trimble, timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with the timbrels and dancing. Verse 21 says, Marian sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurtled into the sea. See, Marian was a woman that was a prophet. That's Aaron's sister. Today, just as she did, we must worship our Savior, our God, our Lord. We must serve him. We must worship him with what we know how to. Whether we just clap our hands, whether we just raise our hands, whether we just sit in our chairs, whether we just think in our heart, whether we, we, we just speak to him with ourselves. God knows they're joyful comes in the morning. Verse 21 says, Marion sang to them, sing to the Lord, for as he is a highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurtled into the sea. We must exalt our king, our God, our Savior, our Lord, because he has delivered our enemies. Those chariots, those horsemen, those pharaohs, the sea has swallowed them. See, when the enemy gets swallowed in front of us, when God works the battle for us, we begin to exalt praises to him. Because we are just men, we are just humans. We go through all the difficulties of life that every human being can acquire. We have emotions. We cry. We hope. And, and, and we think. We strategize. But see, God will take you through every situation. No matter whatever you're involved in. Whether it's a job, school, God is with you right now. Verse 22 says this. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. Just as the Israelites were traveling through this desert, we are walking our desert lives ourselves. When we're walking the desert, it's hard to find water, right? Finding out water is only a miracle if you do find water. In our life, sometimes we feel like we're walking through the desert. Where can I get my water, my thirst quench? How do I get even take a break from falling, going through my situation? How do I get even a rest from what I'm doing, what I'm going through? See, Jesus is our Savior and our Lord. He will bring the water in time of need. He will always be there all the time. Whether you, you have nothing excellent everything's going on where, where there's nothing going on in your life whether everything is going great God is with you there whether things are falling apart God is with you too there verse 23 says 
when they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. This is why the place is called Marah. You know, when we go to a well or water that's flowing, we drink it and it tastes sour. What does that make you feel? Well, I should have never drank this water in the first place. But we question ourselves sometimes, how will I know it's the right water to drink or not the right water to drink? When we're walking a desert life. But see, that's when God is important in our life. He will guide our footsteps. He will direct our path. As long as we allow him, as long as we are directed by his spirit, the words that are written in the Bible is his words. We communicate with him by reading it, believing it, and acting it out. He is our living God. So today, whether you're drinking a sour water, are the sweet water, are the water that quenches your thirst. Ask God for his direction. Ask him to lead you. Verse 24 says, So the people grumble against Moses, saying, What are, what are we to drink? We sometimes complain because things are not going right for us. We, we, as, hu we as humans love to, to make a list and say, I wish this was like this. I don't have this. This is what I should have at this time of, of my life or at this season of my circumstances or at this moment in time of my age or we compare against statistics or against circumstances that other people have gone through. But we must know this. We must believe by faith that Jesus is our Lord to be still and know that he is God. To be still that he is God will carry us through a lot of situations. Let us remember that. We don't want to complain. We don't want to we, we don't want to be asking for where is the water? But yet Jesus Christ, God Almighty, He lives in our heart. All we need to do is draw the well out of our heart to make it our strength to persevere through our situation. Which means that we have to read the Bible. We have to believe what we're reading. And we have to act it out by what it's saying. In that way, you will ground yourself with the Word of God. The wind may come, storms may come, the tornadoes may come of life, but you will persevere through every circumstances of a situation, any situation you're experiencing. I remember growing up in, this, in, in the fall time around October, the wind would just blow low strong and the dust is so fine that it turns red in the air it piles up that when you out there ranching the cattle or, or or sheep or goats the livestock that you're hurt you're hurting as you are sheep herding You cannot see. You cannot see through where you're walking. 
but you only walking by memory or, or, or by feeling. See, that's what happens when we're in a situation. Sometimes we can't see beyond our fingers, beyond, beyond our arm. But what gets us through a situation is God. God is the only one can take us through. He's the only one that will see you through your situation. You're going to find your way out of that situation by trusting in him, by believing him, by depending upon him, by speaking to him, by using his promises that are in the word of God. Verse 25 says, Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. See, here Moses is talking to God. And the Lord showed Moses that wood. As he threw it in the water, the water was able to be drinkable. You know, today, we don't drink as much as water that comes from, from streams or, 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 or spring water anymore because in healthcare, we feel like it has to be tested. It has to go through certain testing for us to drink. We, it's, it's, it's very simple to do. You buy a kit, and then you just put it in your water bottle, shake it. It tells the pH level is drinkable or not. So we go through our own physical ways of purifying our water if we are hiking, if we are in a remote area. But see, in this time, the Israelites didn't have that. They had to depend upon the Lord to purify the water to be drinkable. See, in our life today, we must pray over anything we're going to eat or drink because the Lord provided for us. The Lord has purified our food and water. He cleansed it. Because we believe by faith that it is drinkable and the food we're going to eat is eatable. He is our King of kings, our Lord of lords. So let us remember today that we must show him that we are his child, that he is our God. That he will see us through every circumstances of our life. We allow him. We do that by speaking to him, praying, singing, exalting him. We do that by meditating on the scriptures. We do that by action. We, we do that also by establishing a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to see him as your Lord and Savior. You have to know and know that you belong to the family of Christ. Then he will help you through it. His arm is not too short to save you. His arm is strong and mighty. He is our anchor. He is God. He is a king of kings. He's a king of glory. He is a most high. He is Jesus. As we adore him, as we exalt him, he is our bread of life. 
He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is our redeemer. He is Jesus. He's our deliverer. Let us surrender to him. Allow him to come into your life. That he will be with you to your toughest time and to the time where you don't really need everything's going great. And all things will work good. Psalm 117, praise the Lord, all you nations, extol him, all you peoples, for great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. We have run out of time, but Faith City Outreach can be heard again on Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at 4 p.m. Pacific Time. This radio program is sponsored by King Jesus Christ Ministries in Phoenix, Arizona. You have been listening to the Faith City Outreach with Marina Maria as she interviews Christian pastors and leaders to discuss scriptures and topics affecting the Christian community and to pray for the nations. If you need to contact Marina Maria, please email her at fcoprogram at gmail.com. If you are looking for a Holy Spirited and bilingual church in the Phoenix, Arizona area, I invite you to King Jesus Christ Ministries at 3106 North 35th Avenue, Suite 3, Phoenix, Arizona. Zip code is 85017. The music used in this broadcast is provided courtesy of zapsplat.com. Until next time, Marina wants to remind you from Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.